in this tutorial, we are going to be, let me make an adjustment here, showing you a handful of techniques that you can utilize to protect your particular computer system from malicious viruses and, and ransomware. All right? Okay. All right. First approach, all right, that we suggest, all right, is to make sure you have a current backup of your files. Matter of fact, not just your file system files, but also your computer system, all right, which includes your operating system and your applications. All right. So, what this is going to involve? This is going to involve taking a uh, making a, a disk. Well, not necessarily a disk image, but a an image of your particular computer system. All right. Like I said, that's going to include your um, your operating system, your applications, and also your user files as well, you know, such as your spreadsheets and music and photos, okay? All right. To do that, we are going to we'll go ahead and open up a browser here. And browser taking just a second here. Longer than I actually wanted to. Alright. So for this what we're gonna do is we're going to use Eesus to do backup for this. So we're just going to go to eases.com, E A S E U S.com. Give that just a second to actually come up. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the backup and restore section. All right. And then we're going to select, uh, let's see now, uh, matter of fact, probably going to be the easiest here. All right. We're going to go ahead and select the uh, for home and home office. Okay. All right. Now they offer two uh, particular different backup uh, packages here. Uh, they offer a free version, which of course I'm sure most likely you'll be leaning towards. But uh, and then they also offer a paid version. Now here's here's the primary difference between the two. Okay, the pre uh, the free version um, offers imaging, all right, um, and of course obviously restores, all right. But the primary difference is the free version does not offer scheduling, so you can't schedule it to make backups, you know, uh, at certain times. Because I mean, one thing that's important about a backup is um, it needs to be current, all right. So you know, if your system files change or if you install new applications, the backup needs to reflect those those particular changes, okay? So with the free version, you would actually have to manually create the backups, all right. So if you're okay with that, all right, that's fine, all right. But another uh, difference uh, between the free and the paid is the paid version offers uh, restoration to uh, dissimilar to uh, different hardware, okay. So let's say your computer totally dies. The motherboard, you know, just 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 dies, all right? And you chose to actually go out and buy a new computer, okay? Now the free version would not really work in that particular uh, you know situation, all right? But the paid version would allow you to actually restore to, you know, the new system with different hardware. All right? So just think about that actually, you know, when you're actually making your choice between these two, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and get the paid version. And I'm just going to do the free trial. And I'm going to just put in a random email address that doesn't exist here, just for the sake of this tutorial. I click on submit, and then I'm going to go ahead and download the software. Now, you can actually see here they're also offering a coupon code if you want to actually utilize that here at this particular time. So you can actually get the software at a reduced price. Which is actually great, might I add. Okay, all right, it's done downloading. We'll give it another second here. Another country second. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open it. I'm going to close this window. And I'm waiting for the application to start. Say yes at the UAC. All right, I'm going to say, we're going to click OK since English is our particular language, where I am anyway. All right, when I go and accept the agreement, click Next. I'm going to uncheck the Join the Customer Experience Improvement Program. And then click next. Now right here is asking where you want to, by default, store your backup files. Now if you already have a location, uh, you know, uh, configure, you know, such as an external drive or maybe a separate internal hard drive, just go ahead and select browse and locate that particular 
uh, area now. And you can also create folders, you know, subfolders within the uh, your particular uh, device, you know, to store your backup files. All right. Otherwise, you can just leave this as it is if you haven't already configured a uh, separate area, a separate, uh, you know, an external device, because this can actually be changed later. This is just the default location it will actually, you know, save your files to. So we click next, and we're going to give this just a minute to complete. It usually doesn't take too long. Okay, just about done. <clears throat> okay, it's finished. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click on finish here. And there's a pop up someplace that I don't see possibly. Okay, let me go ahead and just minimize this here. Make sure there's nothing I'm missing. Oh, there we go. Close the web browser that it comes up and click finish. All right, so we have a new icon on our desktop, which is Isis. So I'm going to go ahead and open it and we'll walk you through this real quick. We'll walk you through this real quick. Sorry, you might not have heard that. Okay. Give me just a second to open. Okay. Now, this, since we're still just using the trial version, all right, we're going to go ahead and click on later. But if you do choose to purchase it, remember they do offer the, they were offering at this particular time, the, uh, the discount uh, code. All right, but if they are not offering the code, you can always contact us because we actually do actually uh, sell this software as well. So we actually could give you a, you know, a very good price on it. Okay, so I'm going to click later. All right, so first thing we want to do, we're going to do this a little bit backwards here. All right. I suggest that you go ahead and create the emergency disk first. All right. The emergency disk is used to, let's say your system will not start all the way up and you actually can boot your system to this particular emergency disk and restore it, you know, from one of these backups that you're going to create with this particular software. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just click create emergency disk. All right. We're going to stay under the Windows PE emergency disk. All right. Now you have, you can either configure a bootable flash drive, all right, USB flash drive, create your CD slash DVD here now, if that is an option, all right, or you can just create an ISO image, all right, which is just a, an image of the disk. Now, uh, I would suggest you just go ahead and create your disk now, you know, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the ISO, and then pretty much what we do is we just store this on the same, you know, uh, in the same location as the backup files, okay? All right, so what we do is just click, you know, proceed and just let it go. Okay. All right, now after you've done that, we would actually go ahead and uh, let's do, go ahead and actually uh, configure it to create ba system backups. All right, now it's going to automatically default to your full, uh, to your Windows partition. All right, and then next here, uh, it goes right back to what we were actually mentioning earlier about the backup location. So I'm going to click the little folder on the end. And then what you would do is select where you actually want to store your backup image. Okay. After you've done that, go ahead and give the plan a name. All right. And then also uh, go ahead and input a description. All right. Next, just in case, if you want to schedule it, all right, because remember, like I mentioned before, you're going to want to create scheduled backups. All right. Because you need to keep your, your backups recent. So I'm going to click schedule. All right. And usually what we do, it depends on how much, how often you actually make changes, but I would suggest weekly backups. All right. You know, any day that, you know, you can actually spare to have your system, you know, the system going to run just a little bit slower while the backups are running. All right. So pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just change this to full backups and you could do a full backup and then do differentials in between, but we just do fulls, full backups just to, you know, make things nice and easy. Okay. All right, now most likely you're going to be logged into your system while this is running, but if you think you're going to if you're going to set it for some time when you're not on the system, uh, you're probably going to want to go ahead and enter your uh, you know your username and your password so we can actually uh, utilize your account to start this particular process as if you were logged in. Okay. After that, go ahead and click save. All right, and then pretty much uh, we're going to click save again. Well, actually, it's not really going to let me save. Well, you know what? Actually, it does let me get away with it, even though I didn't actually uh, set all the locations the way I actually should have. All right, so at this point, pretty much just click backup and then full backup and then just let it go. All right. 
once it's done, if uh, you know you ever come to a point of uh, needing to restore it, it's just simple right back here to recovery. Right? Well, there's no image created, but that's why this error is actually coming up. But what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing this from the uh, from a, from a disk most likely, and it's pretty much going to be the same thing. You're going to just click recovery and then select your backup image and then restore and then just let it go. All right, that's it. Okay. All right. Next area. All right. After your backups that you're going to want to go ahead and cover is um, I would suggest all right that you cover a that you install a reputable antivirus. Okay. Now, when I actually when we actually mention antiviruses, uh, the first thing a lot of people actually think of is they you know they would you know rather just install like a little free antivirus, okay? Which is great. All right? I mean they they're, they're they have their pluses and minuses. But here's the thing: it's the minuses where the problem actually comes in. All right, with a free antivirus, the primary difference between the free ones and the paid ones are uh, a lot of the uh, additional security options that the paid uh, versions have, the free version will not have, okay? So you will not have the same protection, right? Even though you won't be paying anything, the protection, the protection will be reduced uh, substantially, right? Uh, also, uh, a great deal of situations with a lot of the antivirus vendors, uh, they offer the updates, all right? The, you know, the virus definition update files, they, they uh, supply those uh, a lot slower to the free antivirus uh, users than they do the paid antivirus users. So that's just something you might want to think about, okay? So what we would actually suggest is you actually use uh, an antivirus like uh, either you know Kaspersky or uh, Bitdefender or maybe uh, possibly a Symantec endpoint protection. One of those, all right, for your system. And they're actually not as uh, expensive as you would actually think. Actually, they're quite, uh, they're, they're fairly inexpensive, actually, these days. Yeah, let's see why that actually didn't come up. Okay. I'm just loading Kaspersky up here. Now, what we actually usually suggest here, you can, um, we're going to show you a, uh, after this, we're going to go on to a, uh, the firewall software. Now, what you can do, you can purchase the, uh, antivirus and firewall here if that's what you actually want to do all right but since we we usually choose just to use the uh, just the antivirus alone from Kaspersky and then we use a different firewall because we need something just a little bit more aggressive than what Kaspersky's antivirus feature actually provides okay so all right so after you've installed your uh, reputable antivirus preferably not a paid one I, I mean preferably not a free one all right next step would be a firewall that offers um, strong process control. Now, when I mention process control, all right, let me just show you this here, the task manager. Everything that runs within Windows is a process, okay? Like the web browser, it's a process, all right? Cortana is a process. And when a virus actually runs on your system, it, it runs as a process, all right? And if you stop it from, you know, stop the process from opening from the, you know, from the start, uh, it's kind of hard for you to get infected if the virus can't actually, you know, can't actually, you know, execute on your system. All right. I mean, you, you, your files will not, you know, most likely be, you know, get encrypted if the virus actually cannot execute and then call, you know, a command and control server. All right. So what we want to do from Zone Alarm is we want to just get the free firewall. Okay. And I'm going to say no thanks there. And we'll download this real quick. Now, Zone Alarm, what it will do, all right, is it will ask you, well, once it learns, all right, when, it, when you first install it, I'm going to click yes here. It runs through an auto learn routine. And now, once it learns your system, you know how you actually utilize it, uh, it will prompt you when I select custom install and agree. And we're setting it to auto learn, all right. Now what it will do once it runs through the uh, once it finishes the auto learning routine is it will prompt you uh, down in the lower right corner of any new process that has not been whitelisted by it, all right? Such as a an unknown executable, all right, or file, or you know, or a uh, an executable trying to do something that um, um, that uh, that, that hasn't been whitelisted, you know, that that hasn't been allowed, uh, you know, for that particular process or, you know, process to do. Okay. 
So it actually, it's fabulous software, but like, like I said, again, you, it, it's going to prompt you back and forth. Now, what you'll do is just select to, now this is normal here because it turned the Windows firewall off. It will prompt you, and then you just set it to never prompt you again. All right. Okay, I'm going to click finish here. Give me just a second. Most likely there's going to be another browser window. Yep, that opens up. Close that. Uh, we're going to minimize this for now. All right. And let's give you an example of what uh, how Zona Alarm actually works here. Right under firewall, we're going to click on view details. And right underneath where it says application control, we're going to click on program security there. And you can actually see the programs and what they're allowed to do like say Aesis here. What it's going to do here with this question mark is it's going to ask you each time the application runs, do you want to allow it to 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 run? Do you want to allow it to uh do you want to allow it to uh, access the internet? Uh do you want it to do you want to allow it to uh make modifications to your your hard disk, little things like that. And you can actually wait for it to ask you or you can just go in here and actually change it. All right? And this is all right, and this is this is your overall trust level of the app. All right. Next, this is outbound communication. All right. Outbound internet, inbound, and then inbound internet. What do you want to trust it with that as well? But pretty much, I would just actually, if you, if you know the application, you can just run through here and just allow it. Otherwise, what I would do is just let for, wait for it to ask you what you want to allow, just so you know when the application is actually trying to do something, you know, without your knowledge. Okay. All right. Okay. So we have our we have a a, a a current backup. We have a good antivirus. All right. And then we also have a firewall with process uh, uh, control. All right. Next thing in line, what we suggest is to make sure that your version of Windows, all right, is up to date. All right. Maintain. Uh, you know, make sure it stays up to date. And we're using Windows 10, so we're just going to go to the control panel. But yours may be. Uh, a little bit uh, uh, different actually from this one here, but pretty much you just want to make sure that your system, you know, stays up to date. All right, so we're not actually really going to go through, you know, updating the system because that's that's just general knowledge there. But if you have questions about that, you can always contact us. Okay, after you're, you make sure that your system's up to date, uh, the next thing is to uh, we suggest to create, um, you know, what I'm going to go right back to the control panel. We suggest that you create a separate account, all right, a standard account, without that does not have administrative rights, okay? All right, because uh, it uh, most applications, well, not most, but you know, a, a large portion of them are going to need administrative privileges to uh, to be installed or you know for them to be executed on your system, you know, depending on what they are. So what we suggest is that you actually uh, create another account, all right, on your system. All right, and then but it needs to be a standard user, okay? Now, pretty much for Windows 10, what we're gonna do is just run through the motions here Speed on the side. Uh, matter of fact, let's just go back here. Actually, I always hate it the way they actually do this. Matter of fact, let's skip over that altogether because it's gonna actually probably take a little bit too much time in reference to actually setting up the account. But pretty much what you're gonna be doing is just Create a standard account, all right, and uh, just make sure it does not have administrative rights, okay? All right. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm skipping around here, but this is actually trying not to make the video too long, all right? Uh, and the last area that we would actually suggest all right, is to um, run your web browser from within a, a sandboxed environment. All right, now, now when you you uh, most likely you're probably asking. Uh, what do you mean uh, a sandboxed environment? What, what does that exactly mean? Sandboxed environment means that your web browser is going to run, in, but it's going to run in a separate, it's going to run in, in a restricted environment from the rest of your system. And to do this, we're going to suggest you actually utilize Sandboxy. All right. So what Sandboxy does is it will actually allow you to run your applications in a uh, a sandboxed environment so any changes that are made within you know from the application while it's running in the sandbox okay will not affect your normal system it's almost like what we're doing here we're running this 
tutorial from a system that's a, a virtual machine. This isn't running on our, you know, on the, the workstation system. This is a virtual machine we're actually running here, you see. So with Sandbox, so you'll do a lot of the same things. So if you do pick up a virus by some, some chance, you know, from some website by accident, all you do is just close the browser, right? Clear the contents of the Sandbox, and uh, you're unaffected, you see. All right, totally unaffected. All right. Now, of course, they offer uh, the uh, the home and also a commercial, um, you know, use uh, versions. Most likely, you're just going to be doing the home, all right? Routines there. But I mean, Sandbox is really easy to actually deal with once you actually install it. Uh, pretty much, just right-click on whatever application you want to run, all right, and select Run Sandbox. That's all you'll do, all right. And then once the particular application opens, it will have like a little yellow box around it. That way you'll know it's it's uh, it's running from a sandbox, and if any changes are made that you don't want, you know, well from the application, uh, pretty much just close the application, clear the uh, the uh, uh, the contents of the sandbox, and the rest of your system's unprotected. Oh, is is left uh, un uh, uh, unmodified, and then at the same time, remember you still will have the full backup that you created at the begin that we did at the beginning of this tutorial. Okay. Okay. Tutorial went just a little bit longer than we anticipated. All right, hope we didn't actually bore you too much with with uh, some of the information. All right, but just remember, just to uh, you know, recap, you're gonna uh, perform uh, backups of your system, complete images. All right, you're going to install a reputable antivirus. All right, paid preferably. All right, you're going to install uh, a good firewall with process control. All right, you're gonna make sure you keep your version of Windows up to date. All right. You're, and then next, you're going to uh, uh, utilize a an account that does not have administrative rights. You know, does not have rights to install applications. And then lastly, uh, uh, you can also run uh, your particular applications from a sandbox environment. All right. And that basically completes this tutorial on how uh, the the best practices to protect your particular computer system from. Uh, malicious viruses and also ransomware. Thank you for watching.